you know, since the, the setup or the, the restructuring of ULI into the three regions, Asia Pacific being one, and uh, taking up this role of chairman, uh, I really learned a lot. Uh, the challenge, well, uh, from you know, somebody who's been with ULI for you know, some 20 years, is enormous. It's an enviable job, but uh, probably not a very enviable job. <laughs> Well, you know, I didn't realize it was such a big challenge at the time when I agreed to it. But, but having agreed, and of course, I could see a good reason, some very good reasons why ULI has a very significant role to play in this part of the world. And I tell you what, since taking up this role, there are a few things that really, really impressed me. And as I learned more of ULI, you know, first is I'm extremely, still extremely impressed with the ULI leadership in Asia Pacific. They all have a day job and yet they spend a lot of time doing a lot of stuff with a great passion, yeah. enthusiasm and commitment. The other thing which uh, is also very impressive and I really only came to, to, to appreciate more is the tremendous network that uh, ULI uh, has yeah. around the world and people are so willing to share their knowledge. And the third thing is that Really, it is the only non-profit organization in our space, in real estate and built environment, which is truly multidisciplinary. That bring different professions, investors, financiers, architects, engineers, charter surveyors together. There isn't an organization like that anywhere in the world. Well, I, I couldn't agree more, Dr. Sheik. Um, well, personally, uh, no, in some 20 years as a member. Uh, I myself and the companies that I work with uh, benefited a great deal. I, mean, I hear this constantly, not, not just from you, Henry, but from a lot of members around. And I think uh, that's a lot of potential for your life, don't you think so, in Asia Pacific, that we're only scratching the surface. Oh, it's just the beginning. So the question is, how do we realize that potential? Yeah, the how bit is always the challenge. Uh, well, particularly in the context of trying to where it comes from. But and on top of the technological changes that we're going to experience in the next 20, 10, 20 years, there are all these oh. mega trends, particularly in Asia. Demographics, the aging process is going to have a significant impact. The urbanization that's happening is a huge rate in Asia Pacific, particularly China, India, Indonesia, and this emerging mm -hmm. country. And Coupled with the growing affluence, just think of the growth in the middle class in China. Yeah. So we're going to see this convergence of trends, not just technology, but all these other mega macro trends. Yeah. We really could have as, I say, as strong as pres a presence of ULI in Asia Pacific as we have in the United States. Uh, of course, China uh, is unique from most of the other Asian Pacific countries is that land is all owned by the government. And the government is a much, has a much bigger role in most Asian cities compared yes. to the West. And so ability to connect and engage the government is also very key to our growth. And uh, I think membership clearly is, is the lifeblood of the organization without not just any members, but the right, right. members Members that are representative of all the disciplines within our space yeah. of, of uh, yeah. interest, which is really real estate and built environment or land use, and that that they are the people who are eventually going to drive this. I think I think China has a huge, again, a used to work potential. Well, China being you know, such a big market and it really lends itself yes. to an organization, a multidisciplinary plenary organization like ULI. It's a lot of you know, needs and requirements for quote unquote responsible use of land. It's a huge country, but really you need only to focus on the, to use your term to focus on these three regions. Focus, focus, focus. Mm -hmm.